Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, we're going to be playing some Abzan today. So Abzan is black, white, and green. I'm um, going to be doing it a little bit different. I'm not going to take the ladder today because I'm still kind of testing this out and trying to see. Um, there's a lot of people playing uh, green, black, mid-range, Abzan. Um, not really a defined list right now, uh, and I'm pretty high up in the ladder, like top 100. So I wanted to give it um, a couple more tests uh, before we kind of take it to the ladder. Um, so this could kind of walk you through as well, like my thought process when I'm brewing. So kind of a different take. Let me know what you think of these types of videos. Um, if it's something you enjoy or if you just prefer me to take all my decks to the ladder and kind of go from there. Um, so this deck is predominantly green black with white splashes for a couple sideboard cards. Um, and then Felidar Retreat in the main, as well as Nethroy, uh, Mythos of Nethroy, uh, being able to destroy anything. Um, so this is generally referred to as a rock-style strategy, um, in which we're killing everything and then just winning with better top decks. Um, there's kind of a reanimation sub-theme to the deck. Um, but we have a number of removal spells, Blood Chief's Thirst. I'm going with Eliminate over Heartless Act, just because of the mono green decks as well as some of the adventure decks. It hits most of the stuff that is smaller. Uh, we have the Heartless Axe in the sideboard. Uh, Nethroy's more removal. Um, and then Pelucranos can also be used as a fight effect to kill stuff. Um, Creature-wise, uh, we have a couple scavenging uses. The Tangled Floridia, Florahedron uh, is both uh, mana ramp early if needed or land. Uh, some Chevelles, uh, card draw, and kind of a, a sticky threat. Um, we have some Kazandu Mammoths, again, creature or land, depending on what we need. Uh, some Grakmaws, basically, we have a couple creatures that can get counters and ways to get counters on creatures, so it kind of plays into that theme. It's also a way that we can kind of trade profitably. Uh, it could die, and then we get another creature, so it's just grinding value that way for us. It's also of note, zero power when it's in the graveyard, which I'll cover in a sec. Um, same with Pelucranos, zero power. Um, that's because of Nethroi, Apex of Death. Um, when you mutate onto a card, uh, you can return power 10 or less from your graveyard. So you can get these back basically for free, and then they'll enter the battlefield with the counters on it. Uh, three Elder Gargaroths as pretty much your beatdown win condition for the most part. Uh, card advantage built in. Um, and then just rounding up the deck, we have Maze Mind's Tome. I've really liked going with uh, Maze Mind so far. Um, the deck's trading one for one a lot, so the, having them uh, like having access to this is meaningful uh, as card draw as well as the life gain. Uh, Agadame's uh, Awakening can bring back a bunch of stuff. Our curve's a little higher, so I'm not playing too many of them. Uh, Felidar Retreat's a way to make tokens as well as pump the team later on. Uh, Nisa is a way to cheat stuff into play, but also just a steady supply of attackers. Um, my favorite line when I was testing is turn five, Play Nisa, play Fabled Passage, crack Fabled Passage, put into play a Gargaroth with two counters on it. Uh, so pretty good turn. Uh, one Vivian as card advantage, and then two Garricks, uh, just another ways to make tokens. So you'll notice with Felidar Retreat, we have a number of ways to make tokens as well. Put counters on them, and then that kind of plays with the Grakma. So there's a lot of synergies kind of in the deck. Uh, the mana base, we're not playing any basic planes, but we do have the Pathways as well as the Trinome. Um, the sideboard is still kind of there. I might want to play um, Extinction Event. We'll see after a couple games. But Chain Web for like the mill decks, Soul Guide for the dedicated graveyard decks, Remorse uh, for the grindier matchups, Heartless Act, a Wilt to blow up enchantments, Harbingers versus the black base removal. Conquer's Death is very good against the food based matchups. So trying that out. And then uh, Great Henge for card advantage, life gain. So we'll just fire it up, casual gaming today, um, see how it is in testing, and then we can see to take it. So traditional play, let's play Abzan Pile and go from there. Freebird, um, Mythos has been really good. If you have the colors, I've blown up all sorts of stuff with it, so it's a really flexible card. Um, just historically, Abzan hasn't been enough to reward you to play those colors, but if you can play it, I would suggest it. Out of curiosity, I just uh, hooked up Cardboard Live. Do you see the deck list? up on the screen okay so this is mill most likely uh this hand's pretty slow i think we mulligan okay keep this hand put back a fable passage
Combs a nice draw there. So I think against Mill, we don't necessarily want to scry. I'll take the card draw. I'll just play Mammoth here and pass the turn. We'll draw a card on end step. If I can get this Felidar retreat down, it'll be pretty good. And then I ideally want to hold this passage to get two tokens. Drawing one of our Pelucranos feels kind of bad. So we have two cards in the graveyard, so Drown in the Lock isn't really something that's active. So I think we go Grackma. Yeah, just if you see Cardboard Live, it should show a deckless widget just on this side over here. I just want to know if you can see it. I was having issues with the deckless prompter, so seeing if that works. Okay, awesome. So unfortunately with Heartless Act, it takes the counters off Grakma, so you don't get the creature. Just gonna try something else out. Oh, now Stream Decker's working. Hmm. Okay, so I'll have to update that. So opponent's missing card draw. We have five cards in the grave. I think we try to get this down. It's the biggest payoff if they have Drown in the Lock. So they had the Lofty Denial, which hurts. We could have paid for the land for it. Sorry, just trying to... Okay, so Cardboard Live, I need to turn off Stream Decker. So we'll go Pelucranos here. If they mill it, we just get it back. We get to exile our graveyard. opponent here, see what they're up to. Okay, so they drowned here, that's fine. We can escape it back the following turn. Tangled Florhedron. So I think what we do, just play this out. They're not really applying too much pressure on us, which is fine. And then I can start exiling my graveyard. Hey, Cal. Yeah, um, I played this briefly and like briefly off stream. I'm just testing it out before we take it to the ladder. I don't think it's there yet but just playing around to see how it goes. So I can escape Pelucranos back next turn. We'll shut off a lot of Thieves Guild as well. 
Oh, it's a bandana. I, um, my hair is really messy. It's, uh, a little all over the place. I got the, the COVID hair. Okay, so they can have a counter here. I still think we escape. So they can have a counter here. They've shown lofty denial. Okay, they frantic inventory. Pluricanos comes as a 12-12 here, which is nice. Um, we are at three cards in our grave. So this triggers off eight. So we're okay. Sorry to hear about that, Hakus. Hope you're uh, hanging in there. I'm going to hang on to the Kazandu Mammoth. Yeah, stay strong. So I think here we hold up the Nethroi, let them react. They're going to try to get this Vivian down. Um... Maybe we just go Kazandu here. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, Vivian's a better play. Three cards, so Lofty Denial Camp or um, Drown in the Locks, not an active counter. I hit with the disputes. So this version's a lot more counter spell heavy compared to what we've seen. They usually don't play the Niles Disputes, so this looks more like um, the Manfield version with, um, what's its name? The Gargoyle? Yeah, and Saloon Division. Well, here we just have an 11-11. They're digging. They got a full grip. Um, I don't th think we want to do this yet because I get two triggers next turn, so that gets it up to seven power. Probably just draw a card this turn. This could be Luris, cast Luris. Converted mana costs, sure. Close to escaping it anyways. Okay. They're throwing through a bunch of removal here. Um, just play this out in case. Or I can go ooze. Ooze might be better because this dies to most things. I'm gonna eat something now because they've shown Heartless Axe. This could be Heartless Act. Just target like my own mammoth. I think we just passed the turn here. I can force this out, but I think we're okay. I could put the six card in and then escape back Pelucranos next turn. Blood Chief's Thirst. Okay. 
Let's draw a card here. Okay, Agadim's actually pretty good. Let's get rid of their creatures. creatures. They have one more frantic inventory, so it just weakens this for card draw. Okay, so I can do this for four. kind of want them to tap out. Perfect. So I do this for four. I get back Grakma, Scavenging Ooze, and Pelucranos, which seems good. This also limits what's in the graveyard. I'm down to six. So this can't technically attack this turn unless they put something into my graveyard. Thirty-one cards, thirty-four. Still got some haymakers. Pretty much gonna save this for the Luris. That's fine. We can get back stuff with Nisa as well. Probably gonna Nethroy on the Vantress Gargoyle maybe. Could bait out a counter spell, lets me attack in for nine. Which is technically lethal. They could have a flash threat. So just pay like this, keep open the mana if needed. Because even if they flash in one more creature, I have a second removal spell. In this game, we've been quite patient with the Tome. We're really just using it for card draw. The filtering against Milled isn't that good because they have a lot of ways to... Um, hmm. So I can Nisa of the Burrows. I could have paid the mana there. But I think we just get proactive here. So I can swing all out. We've only seen, we have eight cards, so they would have death touch. That allows them to trade with the thing, but they'll be able to trade anyways. Let's put them on having it. Oh, Nisa doesn't, this just makes it a 3-3, three, three, not three counters. They could have Heartless Act to make this smaller. Exactly their line. So they do get to take the Nisa down, but they're taking six. This'll die. Actually, that's kind of a Nambo when it takes the damage. It doesn't uh, get the counters. Okay, so they can double cling our Pelucranos. They do need. Well, that puts them up to nine life. So 
they can attack here. I think we just wait. We can Nethroid, like try to Nethroid whatever they attack in with. Actually, they need to do this now, otherwise I can escape it. It's been a good game. That puts them to nine. This counter spell heavier version has been a little annoying. Nisa's nice been okay. I'd uh, play a couple, but I wouldn't go overboard. Like, I kind of wish we had that fabled passage so I could have cheated in Gargaroth. Got the counter. Yeah, Emerfin. Um, yeah, I put out a poll yesterday on my Instagram what deck to play on stream. So it was that one was the third most popular. They, people want to see Doom, uh, like Golgari Absan pile, and then um, Mono Green Food will be probably what I play next on ladder. So Chevelle is actually pretty nice here. Having reach is good. Eating that inventory paying off a bit here draws him one less card. Looks like they're digging for an answer here. So I could put a counter on this and then Nethroy it. Part of the reason why as well I'm playing Eliminate over Heartless Act in the main is the counters from Cheville count as counters so you can't kill it with Heartless Act. I learned that the hard way in a match. It's any type of counter, not just 1-1 one -one counters. Bounty counters, Death Touch, any of those type of effects. Yep, they put Luris in hand. So this is probably Luris get um, Gargoyle. You have enough cards. So I'm going to kill one of these because then that means they can't block Gargaroth. Stop tapping like that. Taking like Luris off the battlefield is a bit better of a play, but I still think it's worthwhile. Let's draw a card here. I'm putting a stop in case I draw a removal spell. That's actually very good. Okay, that's fine. We'll kill them both. Scavenging Ooze will eat the Luris. Oh, it was really good. Um, we did a socially distanced Thanksgiving. Um, so we just did my immediate family, but like mom and dad. Um, it was good food. Lots of turkey. Ate like four days afterwards. I know U.S. Thanksgiving's coming up shortly. Nothing like a 25-minute game one to get going. How's uh, streaming been, Kyle?
Are you doing limited still? Or are you doing constructed? So I held up on the second one in case they had some sort of reanimation effect. Top deck, how was that? How was that for a draw? What have you been playing on the ladder? It's pretty much been a mid-range slugfest, which to me is some of the best magic. Like this game's really shown that interaction is meaningful again. So they block the ooze, they take four, keeps them alive one more turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Symbiosis. Gonna hold the land if we draw Nisa or the other Felidar retreat. Prepared around extinction event as well. Time-wise, we're pretty much on par. Okay, They're really running these Vantress Gargoyles. Pretty sure you're dead opponent. Chevelle's kind of clutch drawing us some extra cards there. We're still on our first Maze Mind's home. Could have avoided that if we played the land, but okay, they did. Sideboard. Heartless Axe. Play this. Um, Spider's good. Against their version, I actually like Soul Guide. Um, coming out, Vivian's good. Nethroy's fine. Nisa's okay. Hmm, this is tough. I think we trim. The Garrick's going to be hard to resolve. Probably trim a Gargaroth. They'll bring in more targeted removal. Nisa's probably not that great against them. It gets tacked down by their 5-4s pretty well. And they'll have the Death Touch. Um, Kazandu Mammoth is also pretty bad against this deck. At least this is pro black. We have the counters on a lot of things. Um, we have Spider. I want to keep Nethroi. I want to try that out. So this is kind of the matchup for it where they're milling us. Um, 21, 22, 23, 26. So we're still okay for Lions. Uh, you have Eliminate, have Heartless. Maybe just trim a Heartless. Run it like that. Yeah, no, it's actually been uh, nice. Like, nothing's been too oppressive right, right now. Like, I've won High Mythic with, like, Rakdos. I've won with the Mill deck. I've won with Doom Foretold. Uh, Mono Green's still great. Okay, we still have 26 lands in the deck. Keep. Put back. Fable Passage. Probably drop Tome on to start getting our card drawn. So I usually just prioritize, as long as we have one white source, it's really all we need with the deck. So everything else comes in as green or black sources. Sorry about that. Rena decided to crash there. So their start this game has been a lot quicker.
And they got the Thought Thief, so they're pretty much online already. They mill another one here. So that turns them on pretty quick. I think we try to play the Pelucranos out next turn. This dies to more things, but this at least um, we can escape back. Yeah, second Thieves Guild turns them on. Sorry, it's just checking stream went live again. So yeah, we definitely need this Pelucranos. I think we lost this one, they just snowballed. These are the aggressive starts where we just haven't drawn removal. What a difference these games went. Game one went like way over time. Probably need to kill that. Each opponent's graveyard. Hmm. Play out Pelucranos here. Um, don't think it makes much of a difference, so let's just get rid of their frantic inventory. Tormon's Crypt may be better in this line. No, we're just dead anyways. Um, so we definitely want more removal. I think on the play... The Tome might be too slow to have four of. Just drawing multiples feels bad. So maybe let's go... Uh, let's try it like that. Didn't really draw much there. Kind of sucks. This hand is garbage. This hand will have to do. Um, so the line's likely looking. Tome on two, try to get this retreat down. Keep the Nethroi. Bin Pelucranos. Find a shuffle effect to mill it later. Play Tome. Next turn, play this tapped, have Heartless act for their creature. Okay. They have some options here. They can take us off a line drop, which I think is what they're going to do. So I think what we do here, that's fine. It's a line drop. I just want to get to this Felidar retreat. Sure. Bye, Felidar retreat. Ah, I was kind of hoping for untapped line to drop Pelucranos down there. Notably, these cards got exiled. Home's so good. Um, so 
they've shown Heartless Act as their removal. Heartless Act's a clean kill on the Gargaroth, so I think we do this. This also plays around, um, what's it called? Um, Lofty Denial, which they probably took out on the play. I think we just Heartless Act this and then attack in for six. I didn't want those lands anyways. Okay, since we got an extra Gargaroth, we'll probably try to run it out. I kind of just want to keep up removal. They're pretty limited with what they're able to play out. So I think just killing this, killing this before they can play another Thieves Guild is the line. We just take them out like that. Now they have to deal with our 6-6. Six, six. Which we can escape back if they kill. I want to keep this as a 6-6. Six, six. It closes the, the game pretty quickly. Plus they could have... Uh, no, we were only at six, so they couldn't have done any shenanigans with making it have death touch. Yeah, that's fine. I was kind of hoping that I'd bait them with uh, the drown there on Pelucranos. So one thing, our Agadim's already been used. That's a good draw. So they have to kill this or block it. I want to get rid of my graveyard here. It makes a lot of their effects a lot worse. Plus then I can just fight. Harbinger gets blocked by a lot of things, although it has pro block. It also can attack through the gargoyle, and then this just dies to most of their removal. Jesus, been a grindy game. All right, instant speed removal. What you got? We could have also fought it, but let's style on him. Let him know that we had it the whole time. All right, took down Demir Rogues. Let's fire up one more. Hopefully the game doesn't go, uh... it was like a 45 minute game. Sounds fine. We'll see how aggressive their start is. Ideally, we can set up the turn five play of Nisa into Fabled Passage, and then Crack put an 8-8 Gargaroth into play. 
sick. Ooh, we don't have double green, which makes it a little awkward. Nisa's line doesn't work. We need a double green. Playing out Agadim here in this matchup. Oh, this is a sacrifice version. This lets me do the Nisa line. This lets me attack this turn, but then has Nisa die. Potentially, still think we do this. Let's me get some pressure on the board, and if they use removal, then they're less likely to have removal to deal with Gargaroth. I get to technically play two Gargaroths next turn. If this survives, no damage dealt. Okay, so they got rid of a Rankle. These claims won't be the best against us. a little annoying. So big Gargi. Three damage secured. So if that if they didn't have Rankle that turn, we would have been able to drop both our Gargaroths in one turn. We have the Reach here. Just hoping that they don't have targeted removal this turn. Gargaroth's great unchecked, but there's been a lot more just black-based removal that makes it a lot worse. I think you're a draw card. Grakma's nice. This could be burn. Is collateral damage or whatever that... No, oh, they're just smashing it. Hey, opponent. Sorry. <laughs> you put so much effort into getting that one off the battlefield. Uh, let's play another green source. So there are two rankles down. I can't imagine they play more than three. Plus, we basically re replaced it. Seven cards. So let's get rid of the pathway. Okay, so they're getting Croxa back is fine because I get to get my Gargaroth back from the graveyard. And then play out both of these. Ah, we'll discard Tangle Flor Florahedron. That's a very good card. Hmm. 
would love to draw a card. GG's. Extinction event ruined my day. Alright, Nisa showcasing her abilities in that game. Um, this matchup, we want Soul Guides, we want the Harbingers, probably want Heartless Act. Can see Henge being reasonable. Uh, they're probably killing most of our stuff. So let's get rid of the mammoths. They die to a lot of stuff. The Chevelles also don't do a whole lot. Cut down on a tome. Fell at our retreat. If we get it down, is really good. I'm going to cut a Gargaroth as well. They're a good that game, but they probably bring in a lot more targeted removal. Does the uh, chat, does the cardboard live let you hover over the cards? Awesome. You had to go through a request. You couldn't just install the uh, extension. So I had to wait like uh, a couple days. Just got it approved this afternoon. Come on, jump up 59. Today's National Shawarma Day up here in Canada, so. I'm gonna get some shawarmas delivered. That's good to hear. I'm glad it. Trying little by little to just tweak up the stream. We'll be happy after October when work dies down a bit. Should be able to devote more time to streaming. Uh, keep. So I'll probably play out the second. Florhedron. Do I care? That sets me up for scavenging ooze the following turn, depending on their three drop. Because even if they drop um, Tamaret, I kill their token, I play scavenging ooze. Nothing. Okay. We take those, folks. We take those. Um, so they could technically mill Croxa over. I can kill my ooze. I think we just do this. Pass the turn. That was not a very good timer for our opponent. So I think here we go, don't tap like that. Let's go scavenging goose. Just start eating at their graveyard. I'm gonna wait when they fetch that I'll eat Because that plays around Heartless Act. Then I'll eat this timer at just because it'll make uh, 
tokens for the future timer at Calls of the Dead. Unless they uh, have another mill effect. A little ill-advised for them to play Croxa right now. Let's get rid of calls here. Okay, that's fine. Pelucranos is interesting, but I think we just get this Nisa going. Plays better for like Rankle and stuff if it goes unchecked. Only two cards, so I don't really want to discard Pelucranos at this point if they have Croxa. Yikes. Bye bye, Unchained. Fine, we can bring back Scavenging Ooze and just eat at their graveyard. Kind of glad we got to play two meta decks, even not being on rank ladder. Um, it's been a good test for the deck. Oh, I wish you were aligned. An untapped lined. Garrick would have been great there. So let's kill that. I guess I could have Nisa'd untapped line shenanigans, but it's probably better just doing the ooze here. Just continually being able to attack their graveyard has been uh has value. Garrick next turn goes pretty wide. Chandler's fine. Prioritizing creatures here for the reanimation effects. And then we'll get rid of instance and sorceries. Shrink this down. Second scavenging use is also interesting. I think we just kill this. Am I worried about Croxa? Kind of wish we had this was a green source. Okay. Opponent's done having fun. I was probably just going to untap a green source just to keep it open because I didn't want to get double Croxa if they had it. And then just attack in there. Opponent is done with the fun. Okay. So we went about an hour with this one here. I think the deck's actually pretty pretty good um i'm wondering if we really need the white splashes for like well filled retreat was decent we also get access to the conqueror's death um i could see this being straight green black um but a lot of the interaction felt really good here um kind of like we never got to cast uh nethroy so can't really comment on that um, but definitely a starting point to jump off of um so i'm gonna wrap this one up appreciate everyone stopping by and uh Catch you next time. Uh, probably spend a bit, a bit more time on the weekend. We'll do some more ladder stuff. We're in like top 150. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good one and stay safe out there.